Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today, we're going to be working with SAP Business One, and we're going to be going over some of the new functionality that's available in SAP Business One version 9.0. This webinar is being recorded. It'll be available on our website, so you can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this, plus the others in our training series. So today, we're going to talk about for the demo, we're going to be using SAP Business One version 9.0, and we're going to be talking about a functionality that allows us to cancel the incoming payment with that before we cancel the deposit, and also to split. This is a nice functionality because in the prior versions, once you did a deposit, you could not cancel a payment. You would have to go cancel the deposit, and then you have to cancel the entire deposit or you can do a payment. So before we begin, let's do a quick review of how the incoming payments and deposits work in SAP Business One. So we're going to go into banking, and we're going to be dealing with the incoming payments. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that. I'm going to drop that in my uh, common area. And then we're going to be dealing with deposits. So let's take that and drop it into our common area as well so we don't have to keep opening up the menu. So in SAP, when we set up our general ledger or our GL account determination, when incoming payments are actually entered into the system, they will affect the business partner, meaning the customer, but they don't go directly to the bank. They usually just have to go to a clearing account. This is because the money that comes in hasn't necessarily been deposited in the bank. So we can collect money, especially if we're in a retail environment, we're going to be collecting money all day long, and then typically the next morning, we're going to go ahead and balance out the registers, and we're going to make our deposit. The deposit program, once we do that, will actually update the bank reconciliation program, which again is a nice functionality because if I go deposit 10 or 15 checks, I'm going to see in my bank rec the one deposit. So it makes it easy when I get my statements. So let's go to incoming payments, and let's start with this. Okay, and as you know, we can do incoming payments to uh, customers, vendors, and accounts. We're just going to do a simple one. So we're going to go here, and we're going to call up our customer, Earthshaker. And we can see that Earthshaker has several invoices that are past due. So we're going to go, and we're going to pay uh, this one here. We're going to do a simple one. And again, if you want more detailed information about the incoming payments, we do have a detailed webinar on our site. <laughs> about this. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go into my payment means and I'm just going to go ahead and enter a check. I'm going to go here and we use today's date, copy balance due. Again, very simple. So we, we took in a payment for $37,493.82. We're going to go ahead and add this. Okay, now let's look at some of the effects in general ledger. As we talked about, we are actually not affecting the bank account directly. We're going to like a clearing account. And then the deposit program will actually put the money in the bank. So we're going to go ahead and post this. And then we're going to call it up and take a look at the effect in, uh, in general ledger. We have a lot of data here, so let's just uh, give it a minute to update. Okay, so let's call up that record. And you can see here we have an incoming payment. Again, you can see we paid this one document. We have our posting date, our due date, and we can see the effect in a general ledger. So we're going to open this up so we can take a look at this. And we'll refer back to this because we'll see when we do the reversal what this does. So what we've done, we've done an incoming payment. You can see we've created a journal, 2304. And what we've done is we debited, in this case, the check clearing account here. And of course, we credited the, uh, the customer. We want to credit the customer because he paid the bill. We want to do that, remember, in real time online because this affects um, any type of credit uh, limits and, and, and stuff like that. So we've done that. So basically, what the incoming payment does is it's affected the business partner by crediting the bill, and it's debited this check clearing account. 
This money is going to sit in a temporary check clearing account, and then when we do the deposit, we're going to take it out of the clearing account, and we're going to actually put it in our bank. You can see there. So let's do that one, and let's do another one. So we have two. So let's go to, uh, let's add. So again, here we're going to go, and we're going to select a, um, another customer. So let's go here and let's take uh, norm. And we're going to do this one here for 6000 So the same thing. We're going to select it. We're going to right click our payment means. We're just going to do a check. But again, this will work with uh, credit cards and cash as well. The, um, the checks, the credit cards, and the cash will all go through the deposit program. But again, for purpose of the demo, we're just going to stick with the checks. Copy balance to. I'm going to go ahead and add this. Okay, we're going to call it back up, and you can see the same thing here. We're going to call it back up. We have a, the payment from uh, Norm. You can see the document he paid. If we look at the document, again, you can see now this document is paid. It's closed. There's an amount applied. And if we look at the effect in general ledger, the same thing. We're going to credit the business partner, okay, because he's paid the bill, and we're going to debit this check clearing account. So now we have this money in the clearing account. So now later we need to now take this money out and we need to go make our deposit. So let's go into that and take a look at that. Let me just close this. We're going to go to our deposit. Let's open up the deposit. So you can see here we have the two checks. Remember, the deposits are done for checks. You can do deposits on credit cards and then cash. Obviously, bank transfers we don't because typically a bank transfer or a wire transfer will actually go to the bank first, and the bank will notify us. So it's already in. That's why we have these three versus the payment means where we also have the bank transfer. So now we have these two checks. So we're going to make a deposit. So we're going to go here, and we're going to select our bank. We're just going to tab, and we're going to put this. Uh, let's see here. Here's our cash in bank. And then we're going to select these two. So see, we're going to go now to make a deposit in the bank for $43,551.72. We're just going to add this. Again, very simple. Let's call it back up. Okay. <coughs> so now we have it in the system. And again, this is going to affect the bank reconciliation program because you know when you get your statement, you'll see the total of the two checks on the system. So that's all standard SAP. That really functionality hasn't changed. It's all there. The difference was now if you actually made a mistake and you did this deposit and you realized one of the checks was wrong and you wanted to go cancel the incoming payment, it would not allow you in the other version of SAP. It would tell you that there's a deposit. You would have to actually cancel the entire deposit in the old system. Then you'd have to, after that, so you'd have to actually cancel the whole deposit. And then you would have to go cancel the one check. And for example, we're going to cancel this small check. You'd have to cancel that, make any adjustments, and then you had to go back and recreate the whole deposit again. So if you had several checks on here, if you had, you know, 20, 30 checks, and you want to cancel one, you had to undo that deposit, and then you had to go back in and take that check out, and then redo the deposit and reselect all those remaining invoices. So that was kind of a problem. So now we can do it um, without having to go through that. We can still um, do this one if we wanted to, but now we can do it here by the line, or we can actually do the payment. So let's go to the payment, and let's do that, and I'll show you the difference. So again, we can, we'll do both. So we'll go to incoming payments first, and let's select this one. And again, let's take note of what's going to happen. So we're going to cancel this. When we're done, you're going to see a uh, remark that it was canceled. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another journal entry reversing this out. So you can see here that we have the uh, debit the check clearing, and when we're to see the reversal, we'll have a credit to the check clearing, and vice versa. 
So again, very simple. You just go data and you go cancel. Now before, when you did this in the older version, you would get a message saying you could not cancel this incoming payment because it was linked to a deposit. So you have to go to deposit. Now you can do it this way. You're still going to get the warning because canceling a document is, is irreversible. And you're going to say the document status will be changed to canceled. Uh, related documents will be reopened. And reverse transactions will be created. Okay, That's still the same kind of functionality. So what's going to happen is we're going to cancel this incoming payment. We're going to reopen the document. We saw that here. And we're going to do the corresponding effect in general ledger. Let's just say no first. So what we're going to do is we're going to reopen this document. You see the document is closed. And this amount is going to go away, and we'll have the balance due. So we'll go data. Again, cancel. We're going to click yes. And again, now you're getting this message. One or more checks were deposited, and the deposits are not canceled. The checks received will be credited for these checks. Do you want to continue? So what that's going to do is going to allow me to cancel this incoming payment. I'm still going to have to go take care of my deposit afterwards. But again, I can actually cancel this without having to do the deposit. OK, so let's go back and look at the effect. Again, you can see here that it's canceled. If we look at the document, the document is now open. And there's a balance due because we reversed the, the, the payment. OK, this is still our original transaction. You can see here 2305. So if we look at the last transaction, you can see this is 2305, the debit and the credit. If we go here, now we created 2307. You can see the remark. It's the reversal. And you can see the difference here. We actually credited the clearing account, so we put the money back in the clearing account. And we debited, and we took the money away from the, uh, the business partner norm. Let's take a look at that again. This was a deposit one, so I'm going to look at this one. So you can see here we have this information. And you can see when I go to the last record, we're switched. We have that. So that's a nice functionality. So now we've done that. Now what we can also do, let's go back to the deposit, and let's do the deposit side. So we've done that, and we've canceled it. We've reopened the document. So the customer now owes me the money again, and I've made my corresponding effects in general ledger to do all my reversals. So now I can go to the deposit, and I have a new feature. I can still go data and cancel. But now I have the option of doing a cancel row if I choose to select it. So in this case, we could have had several of these. I don't want to cancel this amount. I just want to highlight the row here. And I'm going to go data. And now I can cancel the row. It's now active because I selected the row. And again, it's just going to tell me what I'm doing. Partial cancellation of documents is irreversible. Related payment means uh, will be reopened, and reverse transactions will be created. So it's just going to reverse everything out. We're going to say yes. And again, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to change it to canceled, and it's going to take care of all the general ledger in the background. So now if I look here, you can see that I now have deposit number 30 for that one transaction. And that's canceled. If we go back, this was the original deposit number 29, which had the two. And again, if we look at this one, and if we look at the effect of general ledger in the beginning, you can see what we've done. We've credited the clearing account. So we've taken the money out of the clearing account. And we've debited and put the money in the bank. So you can see here we took it out of the clearing. And we actually put it in the bank. Same with here. We took it out of the clearing, and we actually put it in the bank. So now we have to reverse this one here. So if I go to that deposit, number 30, and I look at my effects here, you can see the reversal. And again, it tells me it's the reversal of the deposit. So that one check, what I did is I put the money back into the clearing account. So I debited the clearing account, and I took the money out of the bank. You can see here that 2308 was the reversal of 
this one right here. This was 2306. You can see here, again, the credit and debit, and you can watch how they're going to flip when I go here. So again, nice functionality allows me to do that. So now I'm OK. So now what I can do is I can repay that bill. And when I repay that bill, I can create the other deposit. I can do the same thing if I want to just create. I can still just go ahead and cancel the deposit and not have to do the check. I still have that functionality. So if I go back here, and you can see these two, now if I go here and I do data cancel, again, I'm going to get the same information here. But now I have this, so the same functionality. So again, I have this 31 with the cancellation of the remainder, because I just canceled the rest. I'm not going to cancel this again. So number 30 was the cancellation of the first check, and again, here was the original. So the same holds true. What I've done is, remember, originally, you can see here on the transactions, originally, I did this. So remember, I credited or took the money out of the clearing account, and I debited or put the money in the bank for both transactions. But now since we've canceled this, you can see it's canceled. And again, here's the first part of it. And you can see, again, it's the reversal. You see the information here. And you can see the effect. I reversed it. I debited or put the money in the clearing account, and I credited or took the money out of the bank canceled my deposit, and you can see this one here. Same thing. We debited or took the money into the clearing account, and we credited or took the money out of the bank. So again, nice functionality. Again, very easy to work with. Again, simple. Um, not really much to uh, show on that, but again, it's a nice functionality, and that's important because this happens a lot that um, you know, checks would get deposited and there was something wrong. And again, typically you may have, you know, several lines on here to deposit. So again, you can just go ahead and easily do that for one or several checks. Okay, so let's recap what we've gone over today. Uh, we talked about a new functionality in SAP Business One 9.0, which is the partial cancellations of um, deposits as well as the ability of canceling the incoming payment before canceling the deposit. So again, the functionality could have gone either way. What you could have done is you could have gone to the deposit, let's say. You could have highlighted the one, the check you wanted to cancel, do data, and cancel to row. And then you could have gone to the, de the incoming payment. Again, it doesn't matter which way you do it. I just did it by the incoming payment. So the same thing. So again, you have the ability of when you do an incoming payment, once you do this incoming payment, you have the ability of going into data and now canceling the incoming payment without having to cancel the entire deposit. So again, this functionality is still the same. The only difference is that before, that if this incoming payment was on a deposit, you didn't have the option of canceling. You would, you would get the options, you would get the warning saying that you have to cancel the deposit first. Now you can do either way, but the key is you can do the partials. So here you can actually do that, and what you can do is go to your deposits. So in the example of uh, this one here, again, you would now have the ability of highlighting the row and going into data and actually canceling an individual row or group of rows. So if I had something with... Uh, I don't really have much on here, so let's see if we have something with a lot of transactions. But something like this. So you can actually go here and you can say, I want to highlight 3 and 5. I saw the ability of going data and canceling to rows on here if I wanted to. Again, you can set all that up. Very simple. OK, so that concludes our webinar today. Um, again, this is being recorded. It'll be available on our website. So you can visit us at www.michelgroup.com to view this plus the others in our training series. And we thank you for your time.